Well, as you know, my name's Sean Lee Davis, and I'm a filmmaker and photographer. And today I have, well, I'm very honored to be here to be able to talk to you about my most recent TV show, which was aired earlier on this year. And this show was on the topic of cooking oil. Yes, you heard it, cooking oil and biofuels. So for all you foodies out there, no, this is not another show, another cooking show. And yes, some of you might be thinking, oh God, not another talk about biofuels. Don't worry, <laughs> we had the eminent professor give you a very clear introduction to biofuels, so I hope I won't be uh, repeating a lot of what he said. So a little bit about what I do. I have a background in the luxury lifestyle business. As a director of editorial for a well-known publication here in Hong Kong and Asia, I spent many years promoting the high life, excessive consumption, and photographing and interviewing some very beautiful, scantily clad models. And I have to say, it was great. I'm not going to lie to you. I loved it. So you may, you may be asking yourself why I'm here talking to you about this stuff. It's gooey, doesn't smell very good. But they say that beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And if you have the right mindset, this stuff is rather beautiful. And I'll explain why in a minute. In 2010, I set up something called Project Sea Change, perhaps in reaction to my years as a luxury lifestyle journalist. And really, it was a platform to promote some of the uh, environmental awareness about certain issues that I felt very strongly about and using the power of the media as well as the power of stories and adventure. I started by photographing endangered species in the wild such as rhinos, big cats, as well as polar bears in the Arctic. And in 2010, I led a small team of people from Hong Kong, including some celebrities. In fact, we have two of them here today. Jocelyn, Tony, where are you? <laughs> and we climbed Kilimanjaro, all 6,000 meters of it, to raise awareness about climate change. And here you can see a photo of the glacier at the top of Mount Kilimanjaro. Now, unfortunately, by some estimates, that 11,000-year-old glacier will have gone by 2033. So it's very symbolic of the melting glaciers and ice fields around the world. In 2011, I directed, produced, and wrote a documentary about cancer and followed this very brave young lady called Ray who was living with stage 5 cancer. And in that documentary, I tried to make a link between environmental toxification and depletion of our food chain with rising rates of cancer. In 2012, the next project was going to involve biofuels. I read a lot about it, and it fascinated me how we could make fuel out of dead organic matter, and really to promote this idea of waste to wheel versus well to wheel, the idea that we can get our fuel from waste, converted waste products, rather than fossil fuels, which we pump out of the ground. So you see at the bottom left there, there's a converter, which I take from Singapore Polytechnic University, and using that converter, we could convert waste cooking oil that I would get along the way, collect along the way, convert it into biodiesel, which would then power my car from Singapore to Cambodia. So literally, the idea was empowering this road trip. Why cooking oil, you may ask? Well, waste cooking oil is a waste product that most of us just throw down the, the drain, gets caught in grease traps, and can accumulate in sewage pipes and become toxic and pollute our waterways. I save up, up to 70-80% CO2 by using waste cooking oil because it's already gone through a life cycle. And it's ready available. You can go to any restaurant or hawker stand and go and beg for some waste cooking oil. Once it's converted, it's what's known as a drop-in fuel. I can take that biodiesel and put it straight into my diesel engine. It doesn't need any expensive modification. And it burns much cleaner than normal fossil diesel. So, the TV show was called Fill My Tank. And yes, I, I did have to say it like that on TV. And <laughs> <laughs> and it was in conjunction with a production company called The Moving Visuals in Singapore, and it was filmed to be aired on Channel News Asia with a projected viewership of up to 40 million. Hands up, who saw it? Anyone? Oh, there's one, thank you. <laughs> People ask me, 
this is amazing. You're going all the way from Singapore to Cambodia on waste cooking oil. You know, they thought I had one of those uh, amazing, like, fusion generators they have in that film, Back to the Future. When the doc comes back from Back to the Future, he gets the banana peel and the beer can, do you remember? And then he puts it in the fusion generator and says, Marty, we've got to go back to the future. <laughs> Nothing like that. This is very simple, old technology. And it's been around since 1898, when the diesel engine was invented to run, actually, on <laughs> vegetable oil. So I'm just spreading awareness about a technology that's been around for over 100 years. So this was the route. There's a crew of six going up from Singapore up through Malaysia to the south of Thailand, to the beautiful rainforest of southern Thailand, then up towards the congested streets of Bangkok, and then down to southern Cambodia, finally ending up in Siem Reap. And the three awareness goals that we really set out to achieve um, on this trip, the first one was to raise awareness about biofuels in countries such as Cambodia, which is a very poor country, and where only one out of five Cambodians have access to regular electricity. And 95% of Cambodian energy is actually imported, uh, making it very expensive for locals to buy electricity. And this is crazy in a country with so much uh, agricultural waste, which could be, using this technology, converted into fuel, which could then power generators to power electricity. So you can see actually a photo there of the pretty chaotic infrastructure that you often find on the streets of Cambodia. And the idea was to take this converter that I was using on my road trip and to deliver it to an orphanage in Siem Reap called the Sunrise Village so that they could use this technology to get some diesel to power their generators. The second awareness goal was really about climate change. We all know about climate change. How many of you think that climate change is man-made? Hands up, please. That's a pretty good crowd. Pretty good. It, well, it doesn't matter if you believe it's man-made or not. It's really about the rate at which we're pumping CO2 into the atmosphere. And you can see on that graph, that red line at the top right there represents the 41% spike of CO2 concentration in the atmosphere since the Industrial Age. And a few weeks ago, the Scripps Institute of Oceanography recorded that for the first time, well, for the first time in a long time, we've reached 400 parts per million of CO2 concentration in our atmosphere. And this was a milestone beyond which scientists said it would be very hard to reverse climate change. The last time there was this much CO2 in the atmosphere was between 3 to 8 million years ago, when oceans were 60 to 80 feet higher and the world was much warmer. It's pretty startling news. The third awareness goal was really about fossil fuels. We're going to run out eventually. We don't have to go into too much detail. We will run out in approximately 130 years. Not going to bore you with the specifics about biofuels, but it's important to know there are different types of biofuels, and not all biofuel crops are grown sustainably. You can grow biofuel crops such as sugarcane and uh, barley to create bioethanol, or you can grow palm oil and soybean to create biodiesel. Just to give you an example, Brazil um, uses 50% of, uh, it creates 50% of its petrol needs using bioethanol. So you go to the pump, 50% of that is actually grown using biofuel crops. Now the problem with biofuel crops is that it displaces food crops. So there's been a lot of controversy about this in the press, and rightly so, because food prices go up, and you're also encroaching on virgin rainforest in places such as Asia where they grow a lot of palm oil. What I am promoting is the use of dead organic matter or agricultural byproducts which can then be converted into biodiesel or bioethanol. So in my case I was converting waste cooking oil into biodiesel. Up at the top right I was shoveling pig manure, yes, pig manure, um, very glamorous, to try and help convert that into biogas, and there's technology now that is doing that. Uh, and you can even convert dead palm oil trees into bioethanol as well, using the latest technology. And a lot of this is waste product. 90% of the palm oil industry in Malaysia gets wasted, like all the branches and the leaves all just gets thrown away. It doesn't really get re uh, recycled. We could actually put this back into the energy cycle and create bioethanol, which could then power our cars. How do I convert my Biodiesel, well, I go knock on a hawker stand or a restaurant and ask for their waste cooking oil. Now, you can imagine the kind of looks that I would get when I did that. 
Um, some thought I was just playing crazy. Other, thought, other people thought I was a criminal with a jerry can. I got good at negotiating for this stuff, and sometimes I've, I'd have to pay for it. Once I had that waste cooking oil, I put it in a converter, and in this converter, it'd undergo a very simple chemical process called transesterification. After an hour and a bit of heating, I get biodiesel, 80% biodiesel, and 20% glycerine. Does anyone know what biodiesel smells like? French fries, that's right. It, it basically smells of the thing that it was cooked in. So the guy behind me on the highway is probably getting a big whiff of uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken <laughs> or Singapore Fried Noodles, depending on where I was driving. <laughs> on an industrial scale, they can actually get rid of the smell. And this is what a, a, a sort of medium-sized plant looks like. Now, some photos from my trip. Along the way, I met a lot of uh, very interesting eco-entrepreneurs, such as Jack Ling, who runs a biodiesel conversion business in Singapore. And importantly, he makes a profit out of it. Um, I'm there at an institute in Malaysia, at a research institute which develops algae to make the fuel for aviation in the future. So that's very interesting. There's me trying to be Bear Grylls, top left, um, trying to cook a fish. It actually took me an hour to get that fire going. <laughs> and there I am shoveling pig manure in Penang. This pig farm has about 14,000 pigs, and it creates 28,000 kilograms of manure per day. And normally, that just gets thrown into a, a dump and invariably will pollute the water table. So here, what they're trying to do is recycle that pig manure and create biogas, which can then be used for transportation. Here, I'm staying in the beautiful rainforest of Khao Sok, and that's me. Uh, on a, an electric moped trying to weave through the traffic in Bangkok. Sometimes I would take alternate means of transportation, and in Cambodia, that means by ox. Uh, so I'm traveling through the countryside there, and this funny contraption here is a bamboo train. They take, well, literally take four wheels, put a bamboo platform on top of it, and stick a four-stroke engine on the back and get around from A to B. It's quite a thrilling ride, I can tell you. It wasn't always plain sailing. I ran out of fuel in KL, and this is me trying to push the car into a car park, and subsequently begging for biodiesel on the streets of KL. You can imagine the funny looks that I got. That's my crew getting soaked in Thailand by a torrential downpour, and that's a leech. I hate leeches. And there were lots of leeches when I was trekking in the rainforest of Thailand. They, they jump off the branches. They somehow get underneath your trousers. It's not nice. Anyway, after six weeks, very tiring filming schedule, we got to the orphanage and we delivered the biofuel converter. And it's a small gesture, but it's important because this orphanage can use this biofuel converter to convert the waste cooking oil into biodiesel, which can then be used to power their generators. So when they, the electricity supply cuts out, they can be getting electricity from this generator. And it's saving them money to then put towards the education of the kids, which is what's most important. Some of these kids come from some extremely uh, traumatic backgrounds. And just to give you an example, this little boy here on the right was rescued from being trafficked at the age of eight months old. But now he has a much brighter future in this very loving environment at the Sunrise Orphanage. So just to sum up, the benefits of biodiesel, well, there are many. Renewable, domestic, it's organic, so it's non-toxic. It burns much cleaner than traditional fossil diesel and you're reducing your carbon dioxide emissions by a lot. And it's also very practical because you can put it straight into your diesel infrastructure that you already have, so it's not very expensive. Why is this important to us here in Hong Kong? Well, Hong Kong is an extremely wasteful society. By some measures, we are the most wasteful society on the planet. We consume more water than any other city. We throw about 3,200 tons of food into our landfills every day and our landfills are going to be filled up by 2018. So we need to start looking at waste, not as waste, but as a product which can be turned into a value-added product, waste to wealth. And as an example, we can start converting waste cooking oil into biodiesel. Fossil diesel emissions are also one of the key sources of roadside pollutants. We all know that Hong Kong has an air pollution problem. So if we're using a biofuel blend in our cars and trucks, we're going to be reducing 
those particulates in the air. So it's really my job and all our jobs, to all our uh, efforts to really promote to the government the benefits of using biodiesel. And if the government does go ahead with it, we do have the capacity to actually supply the petrol station, 300,000 tons per year. So in conclusion, this is a, a photo that I took, one of the last photos I took in Cambodia. And it really sums up how I feel about the work I do for Project Sea Change. The pursuit of truth and beauty is a sphere of activity in which we are all permitted to remain children all our lives. It never seems like work when I go that out there in the wild and on the road to meet these eco-entrepreneurs and conservationists who are fighting to protect what they love. Am I going to give up photographing beautiful women? Well, probably not just yet. But I am spending much more time dedicated to humanitarian and in environmental work. I'm no Bear Grylls. I'm no David Attenborough. I'm just using the skills that I have to try and put back into society. So I really want to urge you to find that childlike enthusiasm to go out and find the beauty that you find in the world worth protecting and fighting for it. Maybe create a Project Sea Change of your own or an eco-adventure of your own. Because the planet needs you. It really does. It needs you to help make our societies less wasteful and more sustainable for the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.